Um, thank you everybody for coming. I know it was a last minute request and um, I'm really happy that you guys could be here today. Um, the purpose of this was really, um, there's there's several reasons why I wanted to do this. Um, and and the, the main reason really is because um, I just wanted to connect with you guys as new families to our school and just sort of check in and see how everything is going. Um, but I also wanted to really create a monthly sort of um, uh, principal's coffee here at St. Mary's for everybody to sort of hear updates on what's happening. Um, so we can get some face time together and talk and, and see that, um, see what's new and happening. Um, what I think is interesting, because you guys are all mostly new families, um, you've probably not seen me without a mask on. So, so here I am, this is what I look like. I typically don't have facial hair, but I've, I've taken the last couple of weeks to go ahead and experiment there. So um, we'll see how long it lasts. All right, uh, let me see. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna present my screen. Uh, we have a few people joining us today. I have um, uh, Lea, uh, Ann Lee Bassesi will be joining us. She's here representing our admissions department. Um, and she'll be able to, hear, to answer some of these questions. And let's see, hopefully everybody can see. Can you see my screen? Can I get one audible yes? I cannot see a thumbs up if you're doing a thumbs up. Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. All right. So here we are. We are. Um, I'm, I'm here to present sort of this um, some concepts here that that hopefully will help answer questions um, uh, regarding St. Mary's and and um, and who we are and where we're headed. Um, this isn't super high level, but this is just some some basic information that might help answer some questions. Um, so one of the things that is real important and maybe for some folks could be a little bit maybe confusing is re-enrollment. Um, and we're in the middle of re-enrolling right now, all of our fa all of our families who are currently enrolled at St. Mary's. Uh, and I believe actually this Friday is our deadline. This is last Friday, but this Friday is our deadline coming up um, on the 29th is our deadline for uh, re-enrollment. And this date's really important to us because we have a lot of applicants uh, applying to come to St. Mary's now. And we want to be able to honor those requests for those spaces that we have. And we, we won't know those numbers really until we actually see um, uh, what our current families, what our current families are, who of our current families are returning to come back next year. Um, Ann Lee, is your microphone working? And can you give us some information regarding some enrollment numbers? I know she was having microphone issues earlier. All right, we'll come back. We'll come back to Ann Lee when she gets her microphone working. All right, so the re-enrollment happens. Oh, she's coming. Hold on. I'm sorry. That's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Hey guys, can you see me? Yeah, they can see you. Okay. Um, so right now we have 49% of our students re-enrolled. Um, if you have started and not finished the process, we'll need you to take care of that by Friday. Um, if you haven't started, we also need you to take care of that by Friday. Um, as he said, we really need to um, know what spots we have available for our new applicants. Okay, yeah, we're good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get through the slideshow here, and then we can we can field some more questions here at the end. There's only a few more slides to get through, and then um, and then at the end we'll be able to to go through those questions. So that's an important part for us to help us better project our enrollment for next year. Also, it helps us when we set our budget. Um, we've already gone through the preliminary budget setting, and then once we have final numbers, we'll be able to to better know and project exactly where our budget falls. Um, and, and right now, I'm real excited to report, though, that we're um, our um, tuition increase for this year, really, we kept it minimal. Um, in the last couple of years, we've had to have a larger increase for differing reasons. Um, but this year, we could keep it at a, at a low 3.5% increase, um, which, which actually is going to allow for teacher raises, we hope, um, and um, uh, some, other, some other items, such as a potential assistant principal for next year. So that's exciting things to be able to, to accomplish with such a low, low uh, increase in tuition. Also, 
as was just announced on Sunday, we've got a remote learning Friday. Um, you're gonna be learning from home this Friday. Um, this will be um, new to St. Mary's, I guess, this year at least. Um, you know, public schools have been going remote all this time. Um, we did it last spring, but last spring was, was a little bit different. Um, but this Friday, um, we're gonna take the day for, um, as scheduled, many teachers have scheduled their vaccinations. And so we're gonna be able to honor that and have a remote learning Friday. Um, so that's, I thank you to each, each of you for your flexibility um, and understanding the, the value and importance of putting our, our school health here. And uh, so we're excited about that and hope that you can be just as equally excited for us. Um, we have a technology update, um, as is written here. We, it's really exciting. We, um, we, we've had carts of computers. So we've had Chromebooks and we've had computers around carts and we share and we've, um, lend, we will sign up for them and ro rotate the carts through different people, um, different schools, different, I'm sorry, different classrooms. But now, finally, um, we've got two, two sources of funding. One is our CARES Act. Uh, we had to go through Henrico County to put in a request for some uh, CARES Act dollars. We were awarded $58,000, which we used mostly for uh, PPE stuff around the building. Um, but, but also, we were able to write in the request um, some devices for our school. So that gave us 179 devices. Um, additionally, um, we, that number, that 179, was actually up in the air in, in question. We were um, originally requested 200, then they came back with a shorter number, and then I wasn't even sure we were going to get them at all. So in that scramble, um, Father Mike and I uh, approached uh, the, the parish priest, Father Mike and I approached the PTO and asked for them to help, help fund another 160. We wanted to um, outfit the whole middle school with one-to-one -one access. And with, with the funds of $25,000 from the PTO um, and then some other generous donations, uh, we were able to, to pay for those devices for those uh, middle school um, students. Um, so they will have them. We're keeping them. This year, we're keeping them in school. Um, we're not sending them home just yet. Um, we're sort of taking baby steps to make sure that we get procedures and everything in place so that we're not... Um, um, losing devices or breaking them along the way. But once we get protocol in place, then maybe we can look at sending them home um, at a later date. So um, that um, is exciting. So we got the 160 from the middle for the middle school and the 179 for the rest of the building. So essentially, grades two through eight are fully one-to-one -one access. That doesn't mean that they're sitting with devices on their desk all the time. That just means that when teachers need or want to use the device, it's available to them, which is really exciting. Um, so, so thanks to the PTO and, and other, other sources, and we're able to do that. Um, and then the, the last thing here on, on the, the short agenda is uh, talking about next week, which is Catholic Schools Week. So being new to St. Mary's, um, this, is, this is perhaps a, a different concept for, um, for some families. Um, so every year we celebrate Catholic Schools Week. It starts the, la or the last week of January and often runs into February, which is the case this year. We start at Saturday and it runs for a full week. Every year we always have an open house, which is on a Sunday, the Sunday of Catholic Schools Week, which would be this Sunday, but we're not doing that this year. Obviously because of COVID, we're not gonna be able to have hundreds of people walking the halls and meeting teachers and seeing the classrooms. Um, we do have a virtual open house posted on our website that for families to see. Um, and um, we have many things happening throughout the week to help celebrate Catholic Schools Week. And this is a time where we really are, are, are thankful for, for the school that we have and, and the Catholic education we can all have um, and the parents and grandparents who help send us to these schools. So um, you should be receiving tomorrow, Wednesday, a letter in the, in, by email that talks about everything that's happening next week. Um, there's not a whole lot for parents to pay attention to. There's a, there's a tag day, there's a dress like a teacher day for the lower grades. Um, we're having some door decorating here at the school, um, and the students and teachers are writing letters to different people. So that's basically what's happening next week, and we're excited to celebrate and, and just be thankful um, for, for the education that we're able to have. Um, and so that essentially wrap, wraps up the, um, the, the presentation here. Um, let me go ahead and see if there's any questions that you might have um, that we can answer. Um, during this time. So anybody, if you would like to either 
So just speak up, or you can write a question in the chat, which is in the upper right-hand corner. There's a chat box. I know there's got to be a question. Oh. Hi there. This is um, Jennifer Calder. Um, I've mentioned to a couple of friends that, you know, I've been wondering this. And they said, oh, you should ask that. So I'll ask it now. Um, you know, new to St. Mary's with uh, second graders and a fourth grader. And uh, my fourth grader coming from public school has really closed or is closing a significant um, we'll just call it gap uh, in education with St. Mary's, uh, you know, curriculum versus what he has learned to date. Yeah. Um, but I was wondering if you could comment on future grades. Uh, you know, I think St. Mary's kids last year probably didn't get to complete everything they had intended to complete. And for, you know, future grades, kind of how are you going to continue right. to adjust for um, the new families that have joined St. Mary's and my perception is that you probably have a greater number of new families this year than other years, but I may be off on that. That's right. Yeah, that's why it's a really good question. And it, it brings up several points, I think, that, that I do want to talk about. Um, one, I, one thing I'd like to talk about is that we do uh, performance series testing, which I think you all should be aware of since your children have gone through this twice now. We do a, we do a fall, a winter, and a spring. Um, and basically what that shows is student growth. So we're looking to see where the students, how the students grow. And honestly, it's not that, and I know you're not saying this, Mrs. Calder, but what, it's not that your fourth grader is at the exact same place as every kid in that class, or we're trying to make sure that the kid grows from point A to point L, right, it, over the course of the year. So I actually yesterday received a report from our, the diocese that had our testing gains um, last year and then this year um, and and I'm seeing so it's color-coded right red orange green and all of our teachers are all in green every grade level in math and reading from grades two through eight with the exception of one grade level they're in like a, an orange or a yellow status which is next to green so what I'm seeing is that we're all making gains um, I'm also seeing too that overall in, in all numbers, and that, that was a whole class report. That's not individual report, that's a whole class. Um, I'm also seeing too that the kids surprisingly returned and did really well. We, we tested the first week of school, first and second week of school when we came back. They, they performed really well. Um, comparative to past years, when I look at the numbers, we have data from 2016 all in the same document, 16, 17, 18, 19, and then 20, fall 20. And we're right on par with where we were on the past year, so that's real exciting. Um, now, individually, um, we just are actually yesterday and then today, this afternoon, the teachers are attending a virtual training on um, reading and deciphering the, the scores to see how we identify student, uh, uh, individual student uh, growth and how to target those kids in those areas. So we are working individually to see and identify those kids that maybe need to get a little bit of support and grow. Um, and um, and so I'm, I'm excited and confident that the teachers are going to be able to, to get there. The other thing that I wanted to share was we just are beginning and forming a, um, a literacy committee where we're looking to align all literacy from, say, grade kindergarten, first grade through fourth and fifth grade. Um, that way there's a common. Um, so while, while students are, are doing great as they are, we are looking to sort of unify our approach vertically. Um, from kindergarten through fifth grade so that we are sort of it's just climbing right into the next grade level and moving up um, and um, um, that is exciting to me because then we're going to be able to sort of just usher children smoothly as they grow um, so that's a great question and it actually brought up a lot of things I did want to talk about so thank you for that I hope I answered your question yeah so the question is, how is teacher morale in this demanding environment? Um, how do you monitor that? That's that's an excellent question. Um, the um, I have to say they're really good, and I'm not masking anything. And I say that though by saying it's really good for the condition that we're in, that we're, for the situation we're in. Um, they are very frustrated. They're very tired. Um, whenever we get a 
a report of a positive case of COVID, anxiety goes up. The morale is good. We're together. We're strong. We're supportive. You know, um, when people are out, we've been covering in the middle school um, because we have people out for various reasons. And we've got elementary assistants helping up in the middle school and we've got other people helping in different areas. And so the morale is good because we have a wonderful support system here where everybody works together. So that's good. I think, um, you know, once the vaccine came out and once we, you know, were able to um, see that we have a portal link that we can actually access and we can sign up, the morale went up a ton because it just made them feel, <laughs> feel good about, about like a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but, but the hard part is the exhaustion because we are, in the past, the kids would come to get dropped off at 7.30, they'd go into the gym until almost 7.45, 8 o'clock, and then they go right into the classroom and start learning. Now they're going directly to the classroom at 7.30. So teachers start at 7.30, they see their kids at 7.30, they are with them all day long, including lunch, including recess, and then even um, up until dismissal. So there's really no break from, there's, there's no like adult interaction. Um, so so that is, that's been the hard thing and it's just tiring. Um, but I commend the teachers immensely and I thank each of you for the support that you give. So if you can ever send a, a supportive note, go for it. That would go a long way. And I, they're getting them, so that's great. But if you ever think about it, that would be great. What other questions might we have? That was a great question, by the way. This is Brittany Bow. Not really a question, but I just wanted to mention, you know, we moved here um, from Pennsylvania in the middle of the summer. So not only new to the school, we're new to the area. And I just wanted to mention um, our daughter, Olivia, has just absolutely thrived since being at St. Mary's. We could not be happier. She loves Mrs. Benton, everybody, um, all the teachers, all the staff, everybody. They've just been so wonderful and supportive. So I just wanted to throw that out there. It's been really a fantastic year for her and for us. That's great. I'm really happy to hear that. Um, and and that's that helps us know that because I know we don't get that opportunity to really share that information often. And so thank you for taking this time to share that. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention too is um, um, our PTO has been working really hard to find ways to unite the community. Because what's frustrating for me, looking at each of you, is that there's been no opportunity for new families to interact with each other or even with you know, the families who have been here all this time. And that's hard because we have a wonderful community and we do wonderful things together in all the events that we host. You know, the trunk or treat last year was like a sprawling parking lot of costumes and cars and people. And it was just amazing. Um, and this year it was a parade and a lot of you came through, which was great, but it wasn't the same, you know, and, and our gala is always so much fun and everybody shows up and has a good time. We raise great money for our school and we're not being able to have that gala. But the PTO has been working really hard to um, find ways to sort of keep our energy and keep things happening and try to not lose what we always do. Um, and an example coming up is we're going to have um, a fish fry. Every year we host a fresh fish fry and everybody comes in and you sit, and you buy a meal and you sit and you commune together and on a, on a Friday. And But um, we're going to host the fish fry, but it's going to be a drive through version. Uh, we're going to do a Brunswick stew at the end of uh, February, which I think will be great. If you want to volunteer for these things, by all means, pay attention to the Friday Flash and pay attention to emails that come out in the, uh, the PTO newsletter. There's opportunity. We're going to need people to stir the Brunswick stew pot on the there's some late late February. So if you have anybody who wants to take a shift to sh to stir stir the stew, um, by all means, come on out. So um, there's opportunities to be involved and get to know people. And it was great when we did the Advent brunch. There were many new new parents out there that were that were helping to distribute food and do things. So that was great and happy to see that out there. So um, if you get the chance to get involved, oh, we'd love it. Um, and um, I just hope that next year we're able to do a lot more of these things that we haven't been able to do this year, and I expect that we will. So I'm excited about that. What other questions? Well, 
let me just also add um, while I'm while I'm thinking about it. One of the things that I wanted to comment on was our, you know, when you talk about academics, two of the things that we often really focus on are uh, re reading English and then math. Um, and and I can tell you that we have really done a wonderful job in our in creating like a math department where we're looking at math students in learning math from second grade and even before, but mostly in second up through eighth grade. And so some students will arrive to our school um, in, in JK kindergarten, and then around third grade, we will identify that they are ready for um, sort of this higher level math class. It's like a pull out class where they work with Mrs. Olison. Um, just because in third grade um, that your child isn't selected to do that or chosen to do that, that doesn't mean they can't in the future. Um, because that path has you going uh, third grade, uh, fourth, fifth, and then you end up with a geometry, an algebra one credit and a geometry credit upon leaving St. Mary's. Um, but when I came here, I said, just because they didn't start in third grade doing that, that doesn't mean they can't do it later. So we pay attention and we look at some of the data and we look at work ethic, family support. We will look at growth and maturity and how students learn um, and we move kids. We move them into proper placement. And so um, we had some families who arrived here from this year who arrived as middle schoolers. And our, our default is to put them into the regular math class when they arrive here. We assess them. We give them a week or so in class and we see where they are. And then we'll move them into the advanced class if we recognize that both their transcripts represent it, their work ethic represent it, and that's their desire. Um, and it's, it's proven successful every time. Um, so. Um, where it's not proven successful is where we take the word of the school that says that this child is an advanced learner and they need to go into your advanced class. By doing that, we've already put them in that class and then they start struggling sometimes and then we have to bounce them back. And that's never comfortable for anybody. So we like to start them when they arrive in, in the regular class and then we quickly will identify that and move them forward. Um, so my point being here is we, we look at the child as as a child who who can learn and grow and mature and so they're not always just siloed or funneled into a certain track and that's all they do we we put them in the right placement um, so we're always on the lookout for for student growth all right any other questions Well, I want to thank each of you for being the guinea pigs on the principal's coffee. Um, this isn't meant to be a, a um, you know, a long laundry list of things that's happening, but it is just to be able to connect, get some face time together, hear an update of what what's happening at our school. And particularly with this group, I wanted to bring this up. Um, and Ann Lee says to remember to finish re-enrollment. Um, particularly with this group, the, one of the reasons I wanted to come together was to help, help guide you through that re-enrollment part, if there were any questions or any understanding. And if you do have any hiccups or any concerns, um, by all means, reach out to Ann Lee and she can help you um, figure out where, where that issue or concern might be and we can we can work through it. Um, we're looking at right now, let's um, seventh and eighth grade is where we would have a couple of openings and Ann Lee, can you use your chat feature? Is there another, is there another great? JK. Yeah, and JK is where we also have, have openings for sure. Um, <clears throat> so if you guys know families who are looking and you're more than welcome to share, the seventh and eighth grade and JK are the three grade levels where we are, um, where we have availability right now. Everything else is looking pretty full. So, um, so I just wanted to share that with you. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Um, looks like we're gonna miss the snow on Thursday. Um, unfortunately for the kids and teachers, but, uh, I hope, I hope that you all have a wonderful week and we'll do this again in another month or so. Great. Thank you, Mr. Right. Hess. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. I will stop recording.